We're going to begin uh, our home group tonight. First of all, thank you for being here. I don't, I don't want to ever take for granted the opportunity that we've been, been afforded here mm-hmm. by the stalwarts mm-hmm. to use their home. We appreciate them, and, and, um, and we thank God for this opportunity. Right before we begin our Bible study, we have a very, very special person sitting in the room with us. <laughs> She's all of our elders. <laughs> it's the truth. <laughs> and uh, we are so blessed to have Miss Angie um, here. Uh, Miss Angie turns 88 tomorrow. Miss wow. Angie turns a, 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 a young 88. Yes. <laughs> Amen. And I hope and pray to God that his mercy and grace will be upon my life to live Thank to see 88. Amen. Sure, amen. amen. So we, what we're going to do, we're going to sing happy birthday <laughs> to her. <laughs> amen. And if we had known ahead of time, yes. we would have gotten you a cake. Okay. Uh, yes. yeah, I kid you not. Aww. Wish you thought of the best. Yes. <laughs> happy, happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Some of your life story. I think that would be a blessing. I do. I really do. Um, I think we should uh, have you do that one day. You know, just let you share some of your experiences that you have had, which I'm sure have been many. Amen. To that we can all learn from and benefit from. Amen. I tried to get her to make some homemade flour tortillas. But she, <laughs> <laughs> she pulled the age card on me. Oh, <laughs> I said, Miss Edge, I sure would like some homemade flour tortillas. <laughs> She's like, Pastor. Uh, she put the gauntlet down. <laughs> no moss, no moss. She said, No moss, like boom boom. Was it boom boom? Man, she said, No moss. Oh. Say, hey, she 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 got the. She got the age on you. You, you got to you got to give it up. Yep. Amen. But anyway, thank God for each and every one of you being here. And um, let's sing one verse of this. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a rain. Like me, I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. Amen. You can't go wrong. Amen. 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 Tim, would you be so kind? Pray and ask God to bless the Bible study. Heavenly Father, we thank you for allowing us to gather again in your name. Lord, we ask that you inspire the teacher, Lord, to um, give us ears to hear and hearts that are open. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Amen. I would say, I I know we're teaching Bible study, but I would say I feel the Lord. Yes, hallelujah. I feel the presence of God. And um, that tells me that we're doing the right thing. Yeah. We're doing the right thing. Um, I just want to take three verses tonight, very simple. And um, and when I'm done, take about 15 or 20 minutes. I don't think uh, I want to be mindful of the time. Um, when I'm done, 
I'll give you an opportunity to share maybe something that God may have touched your heart during the teaching or what have you. And um, just do something different. Don't always do the same thing. And um, I think we need to improve these. And uh, so we're thankful for um, what God is doing here. And I believe that God has a lot of good things in store for this location. Yes, Amen. Lord. This Amen. Uh, old school building. Amen. Which is a blessing. Matthew chapter 11. Verse 28. Oh, you oh, already on it. Right. <laughs> the Bible is Wow. Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot going on here tonight. Oh. Amen. Sister April's Bible is already open oh, to us. Yeah. Miss Angie's getting ready to turn. Yeah. Yes. yes. Wouldn't make tortillas. Oh. <laughs> anyway, we're having a good time. We're having oh. fun. Amen. And um, Reverend Steele is sitting over in the corner. <laughs> we appreciate Reverend Steele tonight. We're having a good time. Amen. Let's all remember to pray one for another. And um, that's always a good thing to do. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. That's the key. You may have a lot of burdens tonight. You may have a lot of issues or problems, but and and but the but the issue a lot of times when we do is we seek out other ways to get rest or to be unburdened. When the Bible says, He said, "I will give you rest." Rest from God. Is good rest, yeah. healthy rest, proper rest, okay? Rest that will not bring other issues. When God does something, he will not bring other issues to your life, all right? Uh, take my yoke upon you and learn of me. For I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest. Unto your souls. For my yoke is easy. And my burden is light. For my yoke is easy. And my burden is light. So I just want to take three words. And I hope and pray that these three words will be a blessing to you tonight. As they were a blessing to me as I studied last night and went over this. And um, come, take, and learn. Come, take, and learn. Just those three things. We don't need to complicate this. It's not that complicated. I think a lot of times in our efforts and our uh, desire to serve God and I think a lot of times we complicate it, we overthink it, we make more out of it than what it is, and this and others sometimes uh, can make more out of it than what it is, whether it be teaching, preaching, witnessing, or what have you. All right, there's a time and a place for education. There's a time and a place for brilliance. There's a time and a place for intellect. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. We we need that. We need educated. Uh, we thank God for uh, uh, brilliance and intelligence and all of that. But there is definitely a place in life for simplicity. <laughs> Amen. Uh, basics. Mm -hmm. Amen. You can't really think about it. Algebra. Um, I think my grandson says he's taking um, yeah, he's taking advanced or some kind of I asked him. But there's a place, calculus, and all. All those things are wonderful, aren't they? But you need basic math to work it, right? Mm -hmm. You got you to gotta have the basic, uh, if you don't know basic fundamentals of mathematics, how are you going to do the other things? Uh, so how are you going to serve God on a high level if you haven't even figured out the basic fundamentals 
of being a Christian. What is that? Coming to God, taking the things that he presents to you, and then learning from those things. It's very simple, isn't it? Mm -hmm. But it's another thing when we're, when we're uh, attempting to live it, right? When things start coming at you, um, life starts uh, presenting burdens and difficulties and tasks get hard. And, and I'm not going to sit here and act like life is not hard. Life is hard. Life some, sometimes can present a lot of uh, challenges in our life. That is the reason why you cannot do it on your own. That's the reason why we need one another. We need God and we need one another to get us through the challenges that we face. So Jesus said, come unto me, all ye that would labor and are heavy laden. Now, it's talking about the burden of sin. The burden, sin is a burden. It is a burden. Not only is sin a burden, sin is heavy. When the weight of sin that has not been repented of, that has not been forgiven of, is weighing upon us, it makes our lives difficult. It makes our lives arduous. It, it, it causes us to have challenges that we're not equipped to deal with. That's why do you think people turn to chemical dependency or alcoholism or, or in the streets with, uh, with criminal behavior uh, because the weight of sin is so heavy, we need something else to try to appease it and try to get the weight is so heavy, the only person that can help you with the weight and the burden of sin is Jesus. That's why he said, come. But how do we do that? How do we accomplish that? By coming to him. Right? You have to come. He's not going to just zap you with forgiveness. He's not going to just zap you with uh, repentance. You have to realize and understand tonight what you have need of. What you have need of. So he said, come unto me. The word come means to take or to occupy a specified position. Okay? In other words, I'm burdened down. I've got these issues going on in my life. And the only way that it's going to be relief, only way I'm going to get relief is that I understand that I must take the opportunity I must get forgiveness. Occupy the position of getting forgiveness from the Lord. That's the only way the burden of sin will be off of your shoulder. How many times have you heard people say, man, once I prayed for salvation, a burden was lifted mm -hmm. up off of my shoulder. I felt so much better. I, I, I just felt like the weight of the world was no longer upon my shoulder because you came to him, you humbled down, you took, you took advantage of the cross. You took advantage of the sufferings. You took advantage of the resurrection of Jesus Christ and therefore he came because you, had, you were laboring and you were burdened down with a heavy load and he gave you how many, how, how many people have you said, man, I, I feel so much better. I got, I got peace of mind. I'm, I'm not walking around with all that guilt anymore. Right? What does Romans, Romans chapter 5 tells us about? Romans chapter 5, verse 1, tells us about this burden. If somebody have it, read it for me. And that way I'm not doing all the talk. <laughs> Romans chapter 5 verse 1 oh. you got it I got it it says therefore being justified by faith 
we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. We have peace. Rest. Therefore, being justified by another word, the word justified in the Greek means be, to be declared not guilty. In other words, not only when you come to God does he forgive you of all the wrong that you have done, the burden of sin is taken off your shoulders, which gives you rest now. You don't have, you're not worried about it anymore. You're not concerned about it. Because let's all face it. When we have not been forgiven, we walk around guilt-ridden. We feel bad about it, don't we? We know we're wrong. We know we're not doing right. So a part of being saved or allow, coming to God is allowing him to take the burden off your shoulder. And not only does he take the burden off, he removes the guilt as well. And guilt, a lot of times, is just as bad as the act itself. Because you have guilt can, can, can mess your mind up. Even when you've been forgiven, if you still think you're guilty, then you will not be able to enjoy the wonderful work of being saved. Amen. You must understand also that the guilt of what you have done has also been removed. Okay? So come unto me, all you that labor. One of the most famous scriptures in the Bible that I love is found in first I, I, I first Isaiah. Isaiah chapter <laughs> one. You know, like first Corinthians. Um, what was that? You remember when Trump was running for president and uh he said I no, he said I uh, Corinthians or something Corinthians. like that. <laughs> <laughs> he was quoting the Bible and he said I the Bible says that I Corinthians something like that. So I just made up a book. I you know I I Isaiah uh, first Isaiah but anyway <laughs> you gotta you know what life is um Bible said laugh and do it good like yes, enough. So sir. anyway Isaiah chapter 1 verse 18 says, come now. Come now. If there's something in your life that you need help with, that you're burdened down with, come now and let us reason together. Yeah. Let's talk it over. Go to God. Put your pride down. Go to God. Take advantage of the opportunity that he's placed before you. And reason together, saith the Lord, though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. Now Isaiah is talking about this insect uh, that produces this dye-like substance. And it stains like a light. And when you, like red, when red gets in something, God bless you trying to get it out, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's trying to explain to you how that sin is so devastating and sin is it, what it does to a, it stains your life. And, and it's like trying to get red out of something. He said that when you come to God, he'll wash you and you'll be It'll be white as snow, like wool, or whatever the case may be. So it shows you the power of God, how he can take something red and make it white. Amen. Take something dirty and make it clean. All right? So all you got to do is come to him. Take the opportunity that is for you. And then he said, so the first so the first part of this was an invitation to rest. The second thing we want to look at is an invitation to serve. An invitation to serve. He said, take my yoke upon you. A yoke is this, this contraption that you put the two animals in when they're in the old days when the animals would plow the field, they would put this contraption over to the two animals so that they can work in unison and work together so that one animal is not doing more than the other, that they can work together. And so Jesus is saying, get in this contraption 
this yoke with me, and I'm going to teach you how to serve God. And he said, and I'm going to do all the work. I'm going to do the, 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 the um, what you call it, the bulk of the work. He said, take my yoke upon you. Take my yoke. In other words, get in here with me and watch me work. And I'll teach you how to serve. I'll teach you how to uh, do what God wants you to do. All right? But the word take here in this particular part of the Bible means to lift up. Or away from. To lift up or away from. To loose or carry away. Okay? Take my yoke upon you and learn. In other words, if you get in and I'll teach you how to serve God and I'll show you how to get away from things that's bothering you, I'll show you how to get away from things. That's crippling your life. I'll show you how to make better decisions. I'll show you how to walk with God. I'll show you how to get better. I'll show you how to be all that you ought to be. But you got to get in with him and let him help you. Now he said, take my yoke. Do you want to know how to serve God? Walk with Jesus. Walk with Jesus. Serve with Jesus. Psalm 40 and 8 says, I delight to do thy will, O my God, yea, thy law within is within my heart. Jesus will teach you how to do the will of God. Do you know how I know that? Because he said, I always do those things. That please my father. And believe me, you want the father to be pleased. Amen. The reason why Jesus came was to please the father by giving all of us an opportunity to be saved. Okay? Now, last but not least, remember, come, take, and the last part is learn. Oh, Pastor, don't talk about that. Don't talk about learning. I hate school. <laughs> You know what? Even though school is good, there are certain people, for whatever reason, just don't do well in school. That doesn't mean they're not. That doesn't mean they're bad people. Doesn't mean they're ignorant. It's just that some people, their minds work differently, and all these different things. So, but school is good. Learning is good, right? Because. Basically, what Jesus is saying here, and learn of me. That word simply means come into an understanding. That's all that means. In other words, if you'll come to me, if you'll come to me, get forgiveness, let me unburden you, and then get in the get in the. Uh, yoke with me so I can teach you how to serve God and then when we've done that then I can show you how to come into an understanding because you can't serve God if you don't understand right you can't serve God if you uh, the Bible tells us in was it 2 Timothy 2 15 about studying to show thyself approved unto God a workman that needed not to be ashamed, what? Rightly dividing the word of truth. We need to understand, we need to know. We need to know what we're to do, how we're to do it, the way it's to be done, right? And so we need to learn. You need to study, you need to read, you need to pray, and all of those things so that God can open up your understanding. And one of the best ways I know to get understanding is when you receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. You receive the baptism mm -hmm. of the Holy Ghost. God will help you because the Holy Bible says the Holy Ghost will teach you. The Holy Ghost will help open up your understanding. 
and whatnot. And the Holy Ghost is more than speaking in tongues. I know a lot of people focus on that because, especially if you're not familiar with it, if, if all your life you've been told that you, uh, the Holy Ghost is not for you. But I'm going to tell you, I'm going to let you in on a little secret. And we're going to stop. You're not going to make it without the Holy Ghost. The Bible said, and ye shall receive, this is first Acts chapter, I was making up another book. Acts chapter 1. <laughs> I believe it's verse 8. Um, and ye shall receive power after, after which the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And ye shall be what? Witnesses. Amen. So what, that, what I'm trying to tell you is that do not get rest until you have received the Holy Ghost. Do not believe and do not get caught up in um, after you have been saved. You need the Holy Ghost so that you'll have power to do all of this stuff so that God can open up your mind and your understanding. But we have to learn about these things. We have to come into an understanding. That's why it's important to attend regularly, to come to service, to come to prayer meetings, uh, to read your Bible, to pray, and all of these things, right? To come into an understanding. All right. So anyway, we appreciate you. And uh, let me read this one. The heart of uh, Proverbs 18 and 15 in reference to learning. The heart of the prudent getteth knowledge. And the ear of the wise seeketh knowledge. Okay. Come, take, and learn. Very simple, right? It's not that hard. All you got to do is seize on it and take advantage of this opportunity tonight. Uh, is there someone here tonight um, that maybe during the teaching something specifically stuck out to you? Bless you, brother. Uh, something specifically stuck out to you. Maybe God touched you in a certain way or what have you. Uh, this is all a part of us making an effort to improve this and to get a little feedback. Did God touch your heart in some kind of way? Don't be shy. Uh, <laughs> uh, that you would like to share and say, man, so God really touched my heart in this part or that part or whatever the case. Speak now. Okay, that's all right. It's going to be the only time. Uh, we're going to give you an opportunity, and we're going to keep going forward, okay? So anyway, let's pray. Uh, thank you, Jesus. Father, we thank you tonight for this study group, Lord. We thank you for each and every one that came. Father, I pray that something that they heard, Lord, will touch their hearts, God. Father, that, that people will continue to draw closer to you. We thank you for this opportunity, and we just ask that you be with us as we meet again. In the wonderful name of Jesus, we pray. Amen.